Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and guys in this tutorial we'll see how we can actually monitor the sound download progress. Uh, let me first show you a published preview by hitting Control enter on the keyboard guys. As you can see that uh, you get the sound loading in terms of percentage as well as you have a progress bar that is showing it in terms of scaling along the x-axis alright uh, guys the added advantage in this you know using this kind of project is that the sound will play only and only if the sound has completely downloaded okay and since you know the music files may be quite long the viewer actually gets an idea you know exactly how much of the sound is actually loaded right so guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video now and I'm gonna uh, resume the video once we are very close to 100 percent okay guys now that I'm very close to 100 percent I resume the video and you can see that the you know the audio I'm sorry um, yes I resume the video the t video tutorial so you can actually hear the audio and uh, you can actually see that the audio plays uh, only uh, once the sound has completely downloaded okay now let's uh, s check out the project let's check out what's there exactly on the stage now guys this is a progress bar component how do I get the progress bar component and uh, mind you guys this progress bar component is placed on a layer called PB and how do you create a new layer you just need to click on this button to generate a new layer you can then rename it and then you can uh, push the progress bar component onto it and how do you get it you just need to be in the you know I'm working in the essentials workspace and then I, I clicked on this icon and I just pulled out this uh, progress bar component and then I resized it using the height and the width properties alright and after that guys uh, what I did was actually gave it an instance name of a PB make a PB for progress bar and let's see what this is now this is a text field guys it's uh, it's classic and uh, dynamic as well so you make sure that you set it to classic dynamic how do you create a text field all you need to do is you need to just click on the text tool and draw out a text field okay now guys this text field has been drawn on another new layer and this new layer has been given an instance name of status underscore txt all right and the action script responsible for uh, whatever is happening has been uh, kept on a separate layer a different layer altogether and uh, I've named the layer AS3 and if I right click and go inside the actions panel this is the action script that is firing off the uh, the event okay now let's try and understand the action script how was the, uh, the audio or the music download progress actually monitored okay guys uh, I, I have a feeling this project will be very useful because what usually happens is we do tend to uh, download a lot of music and we would ideally want to play it without breaks and that can happen only if you play it once the you know the sound of the audio has completely loaded and it's it's a, a great idea to actually see the download progress anyways so let's see how using the progress bar component of actually made sure that we can see the we can monitor the download progress okay now guys these are a few classes that I've imported okay uh, I've declared a variable and I've called it our sound of the type sound and uh, made it equal to new sound so basically instantiating uh, a, a new instance of a sound so this variable our sound is going to store some sound right similarly guys I've actually linked the progress bar which I've uh, which if you remember I've given an instance name of a PB PB for progress bar and I made show that the source of the, the progress bar is set to our sound now that our sound is basically the audio in question that uh, you know for which we need to monitor the download progress so what I'm doing is I'm actually linking the sound with the progress bar and that's how you do it using the source property right I've declared yet another variable uh, I have called it URL the type is string guys and it's actually pointing to the sound file that needs to be 
displayed okay and uh, here basically what I've done is I'm actually pointing to a URL um, qu uh, qualitylessons.net is my website guys and uh, in the root I've actually kept us you know a music file it's a royalty free music wallpaper.mp3 guys instead of doing this you can actually point to uh, you know if you keep the uh, let's say another music file next to you know the flower file so basically the flower the swift and the music file are uh, you know uploaded to the server in the root you can actually you know use something like a music.mp3 or my sound.mp3 or my audio.mp3 but make sure that uh, the swift the flower and the music file are all in the same folder that's important right it's not necessary to you know put it on the server and use the URL the way I've actually done cool and in line number eight guys what I've done is I've actually created e or declared yet another variable request the type is URL request so I'm using the URL request class okay and I am actually requesting for the URL and URL is nothing but this string guys so and in line number eight guys I'm actually loading the URL using the load method right uh, li in line number 12 uh, what I've done is I've added an event listener to a PB or the progress bar uh, it's a progress event guys okay and I would want that as long as the progress bar is in progress of growing of scaling along the x-axis I would want a function called progress handler to fire we'll soon see the function I also added yet another event listener to a PB or a progress bar that's the instance name of the progress bar of the type complete and I would want that once the progress bar has completely grown or scaled to its uh, original size I would want uh, a function called complete handler to be executed and we'll soon see what exactly that is I've also added yet another event listener to a, P a sound this time okay and uh, guys now this is only for the error reporting so the you know the type is IO error event right so just in case you know at the time of streaming or downloading if there's an error you, only if you want the error reporting to happen uh, would you want to use this otherwise this is not mandatory okay so this is only for the error reporting and here uh, we have a corresponding function the IO error handler right now let's see what is the progress handler that was the complete handler and was the IO error handler first things first the progress handler now inside the progress handler guys I've actually made sure that the progress status prog status dot text field which is this field guys this one okay uh, displays through the text property a message which says sound loading a dot 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 and then I've added a number to it and that number is equal to a PB which is the progress bar dot percent complete now percent complete is a property which will fetch the percentage of the progress bar completed and then I've used the math dot round method to round the number so that I don't get extra fractions you know I get an integer I get a whole number I don't want fractions in fact and then I've added the percentage sign in the end cool and let's see what happens when the progress is complete or basically when the progress bar has scaled to the full size or the original size I would want I have actually used the close method for the sound so basically the streaming will stop the downloading will stop you can stop the download using the close method of the sound class right and guys I've used the play method of the sound class to play the sound once it has completely downloaded I would also want the progress or the prog status text field using the text property to display a message which says instead of sound loading should say loading complete okay so I'm changing the message 
since uh, progress event has turned into a complete event now the progress is over and the event is complete the message should change as well okay and let's see what the function io error handler does basically it will display a message depending on what the error was generated now the error generated will change uh, and uh, you know you'll get a message which says loading failed due to this message is being traced out guys it's not shown on the stage it's being traced out in the output panel says load failed due to whatever the event and the text of that event so basically uh, you could get a different message every time depending on why the failure of the input output actually happened now, as I said the error reporting is something that you may or may not want to include okay so I just wanted to give you uh, an extra lesson or two so I've actually included uh, line number 14 that, that's it alright so guys I, I hope you uh, like the tutorial you found it useful and I hope to see you very soon with yet another flash and action script 3 tutorial you have a good day guys bye bye peace